So a lot of people think that Tesla is a car company, and it certainly is, but Tesla is really an attempt to create an ecosystem that doesn't use oil. And so we have here a team installing solar panels. And so that's one of the interesting things about Tesla is that ultimately the car itself is really trying to kind of a sideshow. Um, what, what's really happening here is that if you were trying to create a battery that doesn't use oil. And so really Tesla should, should call itself a battery company or a technology company that's attempting to wean itself from oil. Hey, and you know that because... What, what's that? Price match, any other solar company. So if you want to get solar panels or a solar roof, Tesla price matches them. There you go. So you just said that the Tesla Energy will price match any other solar company. One of the reasons it's, it's, one of the reasons it's able to do that is because it gets tax credits from the state of California. Uh, and we don't advertise for the service. What's that? We, we save a lot of money because we don't advertise that we do this. Everybody thinks about cars. But we have a whole bunch of different uh, departments. But with the energy department, we don't, inter uh, we don't advertise. So we're able to oh, get everything's word, everything's word of mouth. The panel's cheaper. Pretty much it, like all our advertising friends, family, the, uh, Elon does not want to advertise. Um, he wants to save money. Well, I, I find, you know, I'm sure somebody is advertising for him, right? That's why you go on social media and there's always something about Elon. So somebody yeah. is doing the advertising, right? Oh, it sure. may not be directly from him, yeah. uh, but it may be somebody who's bought the stock and maybe a hedge fund or a bank. So there's certainly advertising. Oh, yeah, for, for sure. And then everybody will just walk around like, oh, I didn't know Tesla did solar. I thought they only did cars. <laughs> like, yeah, we do batteries and solar now. So, and we're having new brand new, we're having brand new probably... Uh, some new technology coming in too, so trying to make installs and backup batteries a lot easier. Yeah. Cool. You know, well, well, one of your competitors would be First Stoller. That's the big one. Yeah. And so you're able to price match First Stoller? Mm, probably. Probably. Okay. Okay. I would just, I would definitely just inquire. You know, it wouldn't hurt. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much. Uh, you're welcome, sir. So you've, really you've got a battery company. We know that because the car itself doesn't really have any moving parts. Um, at least not, <laughs> at least it's trying to minimize it as much as possible. And the goal would probably be to get to a situation where the Tesla car uh, would not have any moving parts at all. I don't know if that's possible, uh, but you know, certainly that's one of the goals is to minimize the number of moving parts and therefore the longevity of the car because you don't have to replace something like the timing belt. And you can see how, if you also have a space program, you can see how the software on that car would also be, you know, helpful in terms of trying to move into self-driving cars, which would be the next generation after electric. So you can see how the ecosystem anticipates, you know, a situation where you've got self-driving cars that don't use oil. And essentially, from that point, from that point once the roads have been conquered, the next step would be to create a situation where the homes are also essentially as energy clean as possible. And so that's where the solar panels come in. And then you know, it's possible you might have a Google or Amazon device inside the home that would make it a smart home. And, you know, ultimately you can see that the future probably is going to be interesting, but of course that's going to need a lot more chips, a lot more semiconductor chips, a lot more powerful chips, and that's precisely the crunch that we're having right now. You can also see that almost all of this would be potentially hackable, and that may explain the rise of Bitcoin, which is really sort of a, um, a signifier for the underlying technology, which is the blockchain, which would be more difficult to hack than more centralized systems. So when you put all these things together, what you have is certainly a model, but the question is whether or not this model is viable. Because Tesla, of course, uh, almost went bankrupt in California. They had a uh, they had to have a sort of bailout, a kind of a bailout, and then from that point in time, they also had tax credits. And these aren't just one-year tax credits. These tax credits, from, from what I understand, continue today, even though Tesla is still. A, uh, you know, a, a large company is actually now competing with smaller companies in, in many cases, especially with respect to the car. So you can sort of envision the future 
and in many cases we're just trying to catch up to china we're trying to catch up to the eu and that's one of the reasons why a lot of this technology whether it's solar panels or you know chips a lot of that comes from south korea in some cases the battery for might come from china they are probably the leading battery makers right now uh, in terms of you know, just something that's viable and cost effective. And that's really the, the, the issue here is how do you create a system that's both environmentally conscious and cost effective without having tax credits? And so far, Tesla has been unable to be profitable without tax credits. It may not have even survived without California tax credits. So what, one, one thing that the federal government is trying to do right now is trying to take that template from California that made Tesla and apply it nationwide. And again, you can see how if just one state's tax credits allowed a company like Tesla to branch out into space, satellites, uh, home solar panels, and just cars, and really, which, which again are really just batteries, battery technology, you can see how all this would come together with the software in the car being linked to the GPS with um, the satellites through Starlink, you being used to navigate self-driving cars. And one of the problems is whether or not this system has some sort of outside independent auditor that would help identify potential hackers or at least potential security vulnerabilities. And thus far, when you're trying to grow, that's not necessarily your focal point, especially if you have a cadre of influencers or acolytes that really, really do believe in the company. And when you have that, you can probably forgive a lot of over, you know, a lot of, I guess, yeah, a lot of oversights. You can probably forgive that. And, and there were a lot of supply chain constraints and so on and so forth. And the, again, you know, if this is going to be the future, you know, sort of a Tesla, Google, Amazon alliance that will give you a smart home and so on and so forth. The question is, are we going to move deeper into a, an economy that is really run by military spending and security spending? And uh, which is, and as a result, has become in some cases unaccountable to the individual voter and more accountable to banks and big companies than the individual voter. And how are we going to navigate all those different interests as we move on to this environmentally conscious in, uh, ecosystem, econ economic ecosystem that seeks to replace the oil and gas lobby the oil and gas globalized structure because again one of the one of the more interesting things about having an, an, a, a clean energy ecosystem is that most of it at some point can be produced domestically once you have the technology you can probably produce it domestically and at that point it might be a race for satellites for accurate satellites and, and secure satellite transmissions that would be, but beyond the satellite issue, you can easily see how the technology would result in a, an opportunity to be more independent from the Navy and sea-based economic structure that we have now that dictates trade. How is that gonna happen without substantial tax credits? How is that gonna happen when we have still so much money involved in the oil and gas sector? Those are really the multi-trillion dollar questions that we're dealing with right now.